Hey Calm 300, it's your girl Gabby Kaiser. I'm Natalie Todd. And today we're gonna teach you guys about the features of Campbell's rhetorical theory. Woo! Okay, so before we talk about the features of Campbell's rhetorical theory, let's get to know Campbell. So Campbell was born in 1719. He became an ordained Scottish Presbyterian minister. He opposed the extremes and Christian concepts of proof. He was neither an enthusiast nor a skeptic. He was strongly influenced by the intellectual society in which he was engaged in, which included those like Thomas Reed. He on one hand was influenced by people like Hume, but also open to the ideas of Locke. Underlying Campbell's philosophy was the idea that rhetoric was a dynamic developing process. He wanted to incorporate into his inventional theory not only the relevant classical precepts, but the principal findings of the social and behavioral sciences. Along with selecting experimental evidence from natural sciences, he did this to avoid the barrenness that would result from an undue reliance upon Greek and Roman rhetoricians. Okay, so now let's get into Campbell's rhetorical theory. So Campbell believed that the ultimate task of rhetoric is to enlighten or argue to the understanding, to awaken the memory, to engage or please the imagination, and to arouse or move the passions to influence the will to action or belief. And the heart of Campbell's theory is the task of rhetoric, which are divided into the faculties of the mind and the audience. Okay, so now let's talk about the features of Campbell's rhetorical theory. The first one is to enlighten. Enlightening the audience means explaining the unknown, removing doubt, creating disbelief, dispelling ignorance, and banishing error. The second is to awaken, awakening the memory and pleasing the imagination, which requires the creation of lively and beautiful images. So he wants us to paint a picture with our words so that the audience can imagine what we're talking about. The next one is moving. Moving the passions requires the ability to astonish, delight, and place into a state of mind and invoke such emotions such as love, pity, and grief. He's explaining that one emotion can offset another. And the last feature of Campbell's rhetoric is influencing the will, which is the ultimate goal of the speaker, and that means guiding the audience to correct decisions. And Campbell believed that rhetoric creates vivacity by making the ideas of the imagination more real, more vivid, and more applicable to the current situation. Vivacity is accomplished in several ways, according to Campbell, many of which reflect the thinking of Aristotle on pathos. First, the speaker can use contiguity in place. The closer the object is to the audience in space, the more likely the audience is to be affected by it. Second, the speaker can appeal to proximity and time. The more recent the happening, the more likely it is to affect the audience. Third, the speaker can employ a similarity, showing the audience what something is like. The speaker can give an idea energy by inculcating it with power and force. The speaker can give an idea animation by personifying it and giving it movement. And the speaker can render an idea probable and plausible by showing that it is likely to occur. The ultimate goal of the speaker is to achieve perspicuity by avoiding vagueness and ambiguity and by being as efficient as the audience will allow. Nothing unnecessary is said and everything necessary is provided. All right, guys, now that you know the features of Campbell's rhetorical theory, we got a cool way for you guys to remember it. Super cool. Super cool. So we came up with your girl, Cammy. Hey! That's right, best friend BFF. Cammy. Mm -hmm. So Cammy stands for Campbell, Awaken, Move, Influence, and Enlighten. So you have Campbell's rhetorical theory, the features, which is Awaken, Move, Influence, and Enlighten. And how you can remember this is Cammie is your good friend who's a calm major and who specializes in rhetoric. There you go. So just remember Cammie. Red. Cammie. Yo, good friend Cammie.